Coming up on Point News, keeping students safe in an active shooter situation. See how the campus police are ready to take action. It's no secret parking in downtown isn't easy. Point News looked into why it's become such a major problem recently. And carnival goers usually score stuffed animals and candy. See the unusual prizes Point Park students won at the latest cab event and why. Point News starts now. Live from the Point Park University Broadcast Center in downtown Pittsburgh, this is Point News. Good afternoon, I'm Hillary Maglin. And I'm Brittany Lawfer. The recent shooting at the Monrovo Mall prompted security officials across the region to re-examine the procedures in case of an active shooter situation. And universities like Point Park were no different. Point News reporter Kyle Anthony has a closer look at the university's active shooter plan. The shooting at Northern Illinois was a tragedy, but it could have been much worse if the police were not trained properly how to handle the situation. According to Point Park Police, active shooter programs began after the 1999 shooting at Columbine High School in Colorado. Uh, Point Park would deal with the active shooter situation and how the officers are trained. Sergeant Nicholas Black says Point Park Police officers go through annual training once or twice a year so they know how to respond. Uh, we train often to where different scenarios or situations uh, where the officers are faced with an active shooter they will know how to respond. Principles of an active shooter situation are universal at all schools. University police would take the lead if something happened here. A police would handle the situation. They would be more than likely first on scene and obviously the Pittsburgh police would assist with the uh, with the incident, with the active shooter. So the city would assist, but off Toy Park, for every first on scene handling the situation. Point Park would also inform students of an active shooter situation by using Point Alert and by also using emergency phones around camp. We would do the, um, the uh, Point Alert desktop, which is an alert that's going to be coming out probably the middle or end of next week, which goes out to all desktop modems with, a, with an alert. According to the Department of Homeland Security, there are three ways to respond to an active shooter situation. First, try to evacuate safely. If that is not an option, officials say find a secure place to hide. If neither of those options are possible, then the final option is to take action against the active shooter. I'm Kyle Anthony reporting for Point News. Point Park's administration has been reviewing the university's curriculum and officials are making changes that they hope will prepare students entering the working world following graduation. One of the changes Point Park has already made is requiring all freshmen to take University 101. This course allows students to become more acquainted with the Pittsburgh area and le learn useful skills for living on an urban campus. Another core objective is self-defense. A whole lot of energy leaks in my body, my wrist, my elbow, my shoulder, my lat, anywhere there's a joint, uh, you know, a lot of tendons to be an energy leak and it's just going to take away from the flow. Officers visit each University 101 class every semester to teach students those self-defense skills. From parking shortages to construction, navigating downtown Pittsburgh can sometimes be a hassle. Point News reporter Brittany Stroud hit the streets to get an update on that work going on around town. It's going to be a tough year for driving and parking downtown, and Pittsburgh's chief of operations tell me it's going to get worse before it gets better. Construction in downtown has been a problem for commuters more than a year. But drivers are still optimistic about the future of downtown Pittsburgh. I feel like it's all for the better, you know, in another year or two, downtown will look much better. Later this year, it's going to be hard to get around this section of Smithfield Street. Parking rates are also going up a dollar per hour on the street and adding to the inconvenience to those who commute. Well, it definitely does inconvenience parking. I mean, I, I find that I do have to park further out from my job, which is definitely an inconvenience. I'm, I'm late sometimes. And some of the construction that is going on right now includes the PNC Tower, which will be done by late July, and the redoing of Forbes Avenue, which will be completed in August. I'm Brittany Stroud, reporter for Point Park News. We have continuing coverage now on a story we first told you about last week. Pittsburgh's crumbling Greenfield Bridge will finally be getting much-needed repairs. But to do that, the Parkway East will have to shut down for a week. Point News reporter Tyler Jeske is here to walk you through the detours. Tyler? Thanks guys. The Greenfield Bridge will be closing in October, which means many of you will have to find another way to get to Shenley Park. To help you get prepared, I'm going to highlight the main detours around the bridge. If you're trying to get to Shenley Park from Greenfield, here's what you're going to do. 
You're going to go down Beachwood Boulevard towards the parkway, make a left onto Forward Avenue, then make another left onto Murray Avenue. You're going to follow Murray Avenue until you see Beacon Street, where you'll make another left and follow that straight to Shenley Park. In December, for seven days, the Parkway East will be closed from the Bates Interchange all the way to Edgewood and Swissvale. So now let's look at the impact to the Parkway. If you're trying to get out of town, get off at Forbes Avenue and follow it through Oakland. Make a left onto Bellfield Avenue, then make a right onto 5th. Follow 5th Avenue until you see Penn Avenue and make a right. From there, stay on Penn and it will run right into the parkway. For those of you trying to get into town, exit at Edgewood and Swissville, get onto Braddock Avenue, then make a left onto Penn Avenue. Follow Penn until you get onto 5th Avenue, make a left onto 5th and follow that straight into town. So those are the planned detours you have time to prepare. Now remember, this won't be happening until later this year, and when it does, Point News will be the place to come for for the updated information. Reporting for Point News, I'm Tyler Jeske. Back to Hillary and Brittany at the desk. A firefighter is recovering after getting hurt while fighting a huge fire in Beaver County. It took eight fire companies to knock down the two-alarm blaze to the Beaver County market. Members of the community woke up to smoke and fire early Wednesday morning and saw that their local market, which has served the community for 60 years, was in flames. Local resident Leola Nichols says it's a big blow to the neighborhood. And everybody that was up here could have caught the fire and they stood up here and did nothing. This is a huge loss to everybody. I remember when I was little coming out here, getting off the school bus, coming over here, going there and getting snacks. And now we can't even do that anymore because it's gone. It's lost. The only one we have left is Mr. Currington. This is huge. This is a huge. It took crews about four hours to get the fire under control. One firefighter was shocked when he entered the building. He was treated at the hospital and released. We oui. coming up on Point News. It was controversial, but really popular. See what students have to say about the big box office hit over the weekend. It's been so cold, the rivers are freezing. But will those temperatures continue to drop over the weekend? We'll have your forecast coming up. We are a social people. We share our inspiration, wisdom, creations, and memories. We share what makes us laugh and what angers us. Built on the notion of a free flow of ideas, our country thrives on the freedom of speech. Without it, who would watch over our governing powers? And how would we share our history to make a difference for the future? It's this freedom to share that gives us a reason to listen. Start your morning with City News. Start your morning with Campus News. Start your morning with political coverage. Start your morning with fun. Start your morning with us, only on Daybreak. Did you know that Point Park has a cheerleading squad? Don't stop. Don't get it confused. Not only do our cheerleaders represent Point Park at regional and national competitions, but they also promote spirit and awareness of every sports team on campus. Come to any men's or women's varsity basketball game at home to watch the cheerleaders perform at halftime and cheer from the sidelines from the first jump ball to the final buzzer. Sports not your thing? You can catch the cheer team lead the crowd at the fall and spring pep rallies as well, or at several competitions around Pittsburgh each year. So what are you waiting for? Show the Point Park cheerleaders the support they show you. To me, freedom of speech means there are no barriers to voice opinions. Communication is key to a functioning society and relationships in those societies. I believe our forefathers gave us this right so if concerns or problems arise, we have the right to respectively use words, aids, and body language to give our message. Compromise may not always be met, but when it does meet, it opens up the world to new ideas, relationships, and makes the world become a happier place. This week, Point Park hosted a fun event to educate students about a very serious topic, safe sex. Point News reporter Olivia Fisher has the story. College tends to be a stressful time and the pressure can be overwhelming. Sexual activity and exploration among this age group poses many health risks and the CDC confirms that the most sexually transmitted diseases occur among the age group of 15 to 24 year olds. Colleges across the nation are taking initiative to lower the percentage of students on their campus with STDs. 
I'm here at Point Park University where they have found a unique and effective way to spread awareness and educate their students on sexual activity and its risks. The Campus Activities Board teamed up with her campus to bring students at Point Park the Condom Carnival. Students were invited to play fun and interactive games all while educating themselves about the risks of being sexually active and provide them with the knowledge to prevent STDs. Well, CAP hosts a condom carnival in order to get students talking about safer sex, domestic violence issues, uh, relationship issues, all in a lower pressure environment just so that we can encourage that conversation without it being too formal where students don't want to have it. Students were asked to answer questions about STDs, the influence of alcohol in intimate settings, pregnancy, and domestic violence to win prizes. Students were also able to pick up free condoms. Uh, CAB got the condoms, actually we reached out to a bunch of local businesses and the nurse's office to get a lot of them donated. Uh, we also bought a lot of them in bulk. For more information about sex, alcohol, and domestic violence, be sure to stop by the on-campus nurse's office on the second floor of the Thayer Building. And keep an eye out for announcements for the next Condom Carnival and other upcoming awareness events. Reporting for Point News, I'm Olivia Fisher. On Valentine's weekend, the much-awaited movie, Fifty Shades of Grey, was released. And it was a record breaker. The movie made $81.7 million, becoming the highest grossing movie in Valentine's Day history. We caught up with some Point Park students who saw the movie to get their take on the controversy. I feel like there's a lot of lines from the book forced into the film and it just wasn't good. There. It was a bit racy. I could see where um, the controversy might have come from. but. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. What really bothered me about the controversy was the fact that it seems to glorify domestic abuse. The movie is based off of an erotic romance novel by British author E.L. James. Coming up, campus cheerleaders are getting ready for their own competition. How they're training to win, still ahead on Point News. Here at the Pioneer Sideline, we get freshmen involved as quickly as possible so they get the real world experience on air and behind the scenes to set themselves apart in internships and potential jobs. Blaine, where is that video? I needed it in Key Pro like yesterday. All right, I got you, Chris. But I had a quick question for you guys. What do you mean the question? Like, it's always a question. Uh, it's always a... What? Where is he? Blaine! 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 Freshmen, you can't find any good ones anymore. Do you know all the things you can do with your student ID? Along with getting discounts to some of the restaurants around campus. Showing your Point Park ID can net you deals on tickets at theaters in the Cultural District. To check out all the current options, just search Student Discounts on the Point Park University homepage. An expression, a belief, a symbol, freedom to worship, an unspoken word. To express yourself means standing up for what you believe in. There's a freedom to worship, a freedom to live. To speak never saying a word, to love, to let your voice be heard. The light of your own path. For more information, visit www.freedomofspeechpsa.org. Located 10 minutes outside of the heart of Pittsburgh, a new attraction is allowing you to escape, literally. It's called the escape room. People pay money to get trapped inside a room and the thrill is seeing if you can get out. They can choose to escape from either a prison cell or a mad science lab. The idea originated in Japan and now there are locations uh, all across the world, including Greenfield. The coolest thing I ever did. 
So I love the experience, and the first thing I wanted to do is like, could this be turned into a business? So you know, we we laid out the numbers, and we could see that it was a business. And we're born and raised in uh, Pittsburgh, me and my partner Corey. So we decided what better place uh, for Pittsburgh, and then and we're both from Greenfield, so that's why we decided on Greenfield. Clues are hidden throughout the room, and once you think you have the code, you enter it to see if you've solved the mystery. People have 60 minutes to complete the challenge. There's no doubt we'd like to escape this weather. Unfortunately, the worst is yet to come. Brianna Brownfield is here with the below freezing forecast. Brianna? Those bone chilling temperatures we've been experiencing this past several days cause our rivers to freeze. Towards the North Shore, you can see various patches of ice accumulating. If I were those ducks, I'd be heading south for the winter too because today's high is a low of 27 degrees. Now this morning we started off at 26 and it dropped to 24, but let's look at what we're looking at for the rest of the week. On Friday, it will be a high of 18 and a low of 4. There will be a little bit of sunshine, but it's not going to help much. The high on Saturday is 27 degrees, a little bit warmer, but we're going to drop all the way down to 1 degrees. And, it's gonna, and it looks like it's going to be a little precipitation. On Sunday, it's a high of 7 and a low of negative 3 degrees. Now that we got you updated on this weather, let's talk to Delisa Lewis to see what's happening with sports. The Pittsburgh Penguins, who are coming off a 3-1 to loss against the Washington Capitals, face their Metropolitan Division rivals, the Columbus Blue Jackets, who are in town for their first time since Game 5 of the playoffs last year. The Pens will have to pay close attention to the Blue Jackets' leading scorer, Ryan Johansson, and Scott Hartnell, who hopes to continue his seven-game point streak. But that's not the only streak. Penguins captain Sidney Crosby has points in his last ten games against the Blue Jackets. Puck drop is set at 7 o'clock. The Pirates reported to Bradenton for spring training yesterday and hold their first team workout today. The Pirates hope to see results from key offseason pickups, Young Ho Kang and Corey Hart, and the return of pitcher A.J. Burnett. Pirates number one prospect Tyler Glass now, who hasn't passed high A ball yet, has impressive numbers in his last two seasons and hopes to take his way, make his way into the rotation. Former Steelers linebacker Jason Gilden has been hired as the new head football coach at North Catholic High School. Gilden had been coaching linebackers at Seneca Valley the past few seasons and is also the former assistant coach at Peters Township. Despite not having any previous head coaching experience, North Catholic decided his 11 years in the NFL with three Pro Bowls and a Super Bowl qualified him for the job. Aliquippa is celebrating as another one of its former high school football players, Darrell Revis, gets his Super Bowl ring. Revis is one of the many NFL players who got their start at Carl Ashman Memorial Stadium. Seven pro football players once took to this field called the pit. Revis won his ring in Super Bowl 49. Another former Aliquippa player, Taiwan Hughes, is proud to see a fellow Aliquippa player wear a Super Bowl ring. What about a, a former Quippian to make it to the pros and make it to the NFL Super Bowl stadium? I think there's nothing sweeter than that. To watch someone you see personally as a child grow up as a little termite toward a football player and then grow into a great college athlete and then launch himself into a Super Bowl stadium podium, there's nothing better than that. Not only did Darrell Revis go to high school in the area, he also played college ball at Pitt. The Point Park cheerleading squad has been energizing our men and women's basketball team all season. The squad is now preparing for a competition. The cheerleaders can be found at CCAC South Campus for all home games. Home games began in November and will continue into the beginning of March. The cheerleaders are looking forward to their competition. I think the season is going great. We have a really great group of girls and we're really excited for competition this year. And some of us actually never did competition, but we, we, we look like we did it for years because they, they're just really into it and we're trying really hard to have a great season. squad practices three or four days a week to improve their skills. I know you were on the team, Hillary. You, you loved it. You talk about it all the time. I was, and it was so exciting just to be at games, and now that they're competing, I'm so proud of them, and it's so exciting for me, even though I'm not there with them anymore. And it's great for Point Park as well, but that's about it. 
That does it for this week's Point News. Be sure to join us next Thursday live at 2 p.m. Have a great week, everybody.